Francisco Doria. Uh, we really have been extremely fortunate to have him here with us, uh, to be his colleagues. Uh, he's a wonderful person and he's a wonderful thinker. So I would like to tell you a little bit about this. We all know, but it's always nice to. Uh, let me start with a silly story. Uh, I was once drinking beer in Arizona, I think it was, with a well-known physicist from Stanford University called Leonard Susskind. It turns out we were both from poor neighborhoods in New York, roughly at the same time. So anyway, he was telling me that when he was a, a graduate student working on his PhD, the students were all revolutionaries. They were rebels. They paid no attention to their professors. You know, they wanted to change the world. They wanted to do heroic deeds. And now he told me, very disappointed, his students are not that way at all. They come and ask him for a research topic. And after that, they spend the rest of their career writing paper after paper on that topic. And of course, this is a good survival technique. These are difficult times, and we all know the problem of maintaining intellectual production. Well, fortunately, Chico Doria heroically has had a brilliant career in which he has behaved in the grand manner, the romantic, heroic uh, idea of the intellectual. So, for example, he goes from field to field. He's done work on economics, in good, important work, deep work in economics, in physics, uh, in logic. Um, this is extremely, extremely unusual, not just here in Rio or Brazil, but anywhere on planet Earth, it's very unusual to find a person like Chico. And I'm sure he has other talents that I didn't know, for example, ancient languages. Or... So, um, um, now I could mention that Chico had a wonderful study also with, with legendary uh, professors, uh, the likes of which one sees seldom. He studied mathematics with Leopold Machmann, right? and um, physics with a student of Einstein's, right? Uh, Victor Bartman, if I'm... What? Or do I not ask What? Valentin? His name was... Well, yeah, but it's Valentin Bartman. Oh, I got the first name wrong. That's right, Valentin Bartman. And of course, he learned logic at uh, the feet of our great uh, master here in Brazil, uh, Newton da Costa. So, um, uh, he just has fantastic work. For example, one piece of work that I very much enjoyed hearing about when you had just done it, was your work on uh, Gedelian universes. That Those are solutions of Einstein's field equations, uh, <coughs> where, uh, which satisfy the field equations, but in which there really is not possible to have a global arrow of time, only local arrows of time. And he was able to show Ghetto had constructed such a, a bizarre counterexample, uh, was it in the 40s? But, but Chico was able to show that this is generic. If you look at the space of all possible solutions, time, time, fields equations, uh, this is what you expect, actually. So the, Universes that satisfy Einstein's field equations in which there's a global arrow of time are in fact exceptional. So I thought that was a spectacular result. I heard it presented here in Rio at a meeting where I met my wife. I'll go into some personal details later. Another famous work of Chico's, I believe with Newton, was looking at uh, theoretical physics and discovering, uh, and chaos theory, and discovering that there are a lot of problems in physics which are undecidable in the sense of computability theory, that there is no algorithm to answer certain uh, important questions in theoretical physics. And I believe you've done the same in economics, in theoretical economics, which is probably why there was going to be uh, an economist here from Saudi Arabia that unfortunately was not able to make it at the last minute. Um, so this is, this is fantastic work. Another example of his uh, heroic intellectual endeavors is his work 
from P versus NP, which is not fashionable. Uh, he has a <coughs> position which goes against the mainstream opinion. He has, with also with Newton, right, has worked doggedly at this, well, doggedly, no, uh, and um, he never gives up. And, and, and is willing to face a really difficult problem like P versus NP. Uh, another example is of his extraordinary work is his work on Hilbert's problem, which was the problem of, it's the only one which hasn't been done, I guess. Is that, is it physics to axiomatize theoretical physics? Right, so I, so I think it's uh, beautiful that he's gone back. Physicists really, I don't know, I, I used to have lots of friends who were physicists, I used to go to a lot of physics meetings. Um, uh, physicists really do not do mathematics correctly. You know, their math is, is very sloppy. It's part of the culture, there are reasons for this, they can get away with it, few mathematicians can't. So it's really, again, combining two different fields in a way that is difficult to try to axiomatize theoretical physics. And I think it's important work. And um, you've been working on this for a while, and I hope to see this book finally. I, I remember a chapter you wrote, which was a summary of the book. Yeah. So congratulations, Shito. This is really inspiring the way you operate. You inspire me. I think you are. Well, you're, you're, you're very generous. I don't think they're generous. Let's not take that too seriously, that remark. I think Chico found his own internal inspiration because of his intellectual strivings to face fundamental issues that are not fashionable and never give up. And that's one of the reasons probably that you stayed in Brazil also. Because we have chaos here, but we have a little more freedom. If we were in the heart of the empire, you know, there's much more control. You have to work on the fashionable subjects. You have to get research grants. It's a it's a difficult environment to be a heroic, romantic, uh, romantic intellectual in the in the grand fashion. You know, that's not really what is wanted nowadays. So so it's it's a inspiring. Thank you for staying here with us. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for doing all that work, which makes us feel that the human race still is concerned with ideas. How was it put by, was it Fourier? Who are the history of men? Something like that. So, uh, um, now, uh, if I may mention some more personal aspects of my, my good fortune to to have met Chico. Actually, it was at Santa Fe, I believe, in New Mexico, right? 1994. 1994. Uh, my good fortune, uh, let me explain why I am here in Brazil now. Um, what happened was Chico and Marie Novello invited me to a meeting on uh, Something in Goethe and Rotating Universes, was that it? The title was something like that. And Rotating Universes? Yeah, Goethe and Einstein and Rotating Universes. Uh, this was in 2007, I remember the year. And um, at this meeting, let me say, this, going to this meeting changed my life completely. In fact, it's, as I explained, part of the reason I live now in Brazil. Um, I almost didn't get to this meeting. And at that time, the United States made it difficult for Brazilians to enter the U.S. to get visas, and Brazil, of course, reciprocated. So I went to the Brazilian consulate in New York, and the gentleman in front of me in the line was much better dressed than I. He had a very nice suit, and he turned out to be a doctor who was going to give a, a talk on some aspect of his medical practice or his medical research in Brazil. And uh, I don't know if the flight was the next day or whatever it was. So there was very little time. And he was practically on his knees in tears in front of uh, the council. 
because uh, she was going to deny him the visa. At the end, she relented, uh, but uh, I realized that I was in trouble. I was the next victim, right, in the queue. So there I go, <clears throat> tell my story of also wanting to speak at a meeting in Brazil. I wasn't a tourist. I guess tourists, it's a different matter, right? So, um, so I could see that she was about to turn down my request for a visa. So I had a, like a, I pulled a rabbit out of the hat from my briefcase. I pulled out a marvelous certificate, a marvelous certificate attesting that I was a foreign member of the Brazilian Academy of Philosophy. <laughs> this beautiful certificate, right, with the, um, with the building, the academy. Sure. Ah, uh, don't do that. This beautiful certificate. And instantly, instantly I was granted the best the tourist visa possible, which was for 10 years with multiple entries, which at that time was given to very few people. Okay, so I come to Brazil, this meeting where I had this beautiful piece of work by Chico. And there I met Virginia. And then? And then Love, love, love. Uh, <laughs> we fell in love and got married. And uh, now we live full time in Brazil. And in addition, we have a, a son, a little boy who's 14 months old. Uh, is it today the seventh? Yeah, he's 14 months old today. And um, born here in Rio. And also we we work to create a field of mathematics here in Brazil called metabiology at the UFRJ, where I was a visiting foreign professor for maybe five years. Um, um, I had wanted to work on biology, but uh, the place I was at the time I had no interest in having me work on biology. So I consider myself fortunate to get the support of the Brazilian government and be able to teach and work on that here. And Chico got me a wonderful graduate student, Felipe Abraham, who did a spectacular piece of, of work uh, on metabiology and developing it in his own direction. And let me say, by the way, uh, our prayer should go out to him because he has a mysterious health problem and I'm, my wife and I are really worried about him. Um, so uh, I hope his health recovers. Um, but anyway, I wouldn't have had a, a, a wonderful student like him, but Chico gave me his student, <laughs> okay. which is, as you all know, in the academic world, a, a very noble act of self-sacrifice. Right? One doesn't easily part with a, a talented uh, a PhD student. So, so thank you very much, Chico. You really um, you really, uh, you know, changed changed my life. I'm extremely grateful to you for inviting me to that meeting and for giving me the certificate, sending me the certificate, which turned the tide and convinced the Brazilian consulate to let me actually enter Brazil. Yeah, you you had we had yet another record. Uh, see, Chico had talked to somebody important in Itamaraty, so that if nothing that I did worked, I had, I had this, fortunately it wasn't necessary to bring the big guns to bear on my problem, but, but Chico had everything prepared. So, so thank you, thank you very much Chico, my wife and I, not to mention our son, are very grateful to you.
Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's why. I oh, fantastic. Okay, but that it's not an obvious connection. It's because you are a physicist as well as a logician as well as everything else that you are. So, so, so keep up the good work, Chico. At an age where many of us really devote ourselves more to university administration, for example, than to active research, Chico is still hard at work doing new, new work, I think. Again, that's an inspiration, especially to me. But, um, I'm closer probably to his age than the rest of you are. So, so, um, so thanks very much for being yourself. And now I'm afraid I have to run to the airport. I feel very bad that I won't hear the rest of the, the, the talks, especially the last talk, which 